Hi, this is Luke Zip from Crocker Farm Auction, and I'm here with the finest example of American stoneware to sell in my lifetime. So this is a seven gallon water cooler on pedestal base uh, made in the Syracuse area of New York State. And as you can see, it's just a masterpiece of American stoneware. The thing that is extremely exciting about this piece is that nobody knew it existed up until about a couple of months ago when we were contacted with it from the consigner. And we are absolutely thrilled to know that a piece of this quality exists, and we're absolutely thrilled as well to be the first to offer it for public sale. As you can see, it is really the type of American stoneware that, uh, until this piece's discovery, only existed, uh, only was known to exist in prominent uh, museums. And really, uh, the fact that this is still in private hands is just mind-blowing. Uh, so when we got the email uh, with pictures of this piece, it's really all uh, me or my family uh, could think about was how did nobody know that, that this type of uh, piece existed. Um, as you can see, it's just a gorgeous example of American stoneware. So just from beauty alone, it's really, I mean, on any scale, it is among the finest examples of American stoneware known. Um, but it's more than just a beautiful object. It has an extremely rich story to it that um, this piece also conveys. It tells a story. But first, let's talk about uh, the beauty of the object. So it is uh, a seven gallon stoneware water cooler on pedestal base, this classical form with rope handles. It has applied in size and impressed decoration to convey uh, this beautiful street scene that really that wraps around both sides of the cooler. So it fills the whole uh, viewing space of this object. Um, it's extremely well fired with vibrant cobalt oxide. You can see how bright this cobalt oxide glaze is, and it has incised um, detail and incised inscriptions as well. But I will get into it. So just as a, an object of beauty, it's extremely visually appealing. Uh, you know, these houses convey, uh, they, they aren't two-dimensional, they're three-dimensional. It conveys this space, it conveys depth of field. It has light and dark uh, shading. Uh, it's just exquisite in execution. But when you attach it to a story, it is just, again, a mind-blowing example of American stoneware. I flew out to uh, in mid-February, and then I drove it across the country to get it back to our gallery. And we had seen photos, but then to see this piece in person, I literally got goosebumps. You know, which, I mean, I've seen tens and tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of examples of American stoneware in my lifetime. This is our family business. I've grown, around, uh, grown up around stoneware for literally my entire life. Um, so it takes a lot for a piece of stoneware to just move me to that point. But honestly, I was just blown away uh, that a piece like this still exists. But let me uh, let you in a little bit on the story of this piece. So you can see, first of all, we know who made it. It's made by W.H. Farrar and Company, which uh, is impressed on both sides of the applied decoration at the rim, but then also right by the spigot hole as well. So he was a, a very uh, accomplished stoneware potter. He was in Gettys, New York, which is now, it's been incorporated into what is modern day Syracuse. So we know who made it. We know when it was made. It's dated 1846, right above the spigot hole. We know for whom it was made. It was made for the Salina Division, number 86, of the Sons of Temperance, which was a fraternal organization which uh, combated the what they thought were the evils of alcohol. In uh, It was uh, founded in 1842 in Manhattan. And then we also know what it depicts. And this is where the story gets uh, extremely interesting. So actually, this piece depicts, right here it says Grand Lodge, 
City and Watts in New York City. The Sons of Temperance, their Grand Lodge was at 315 Broadway in Manhattan. So this piece depicts, this watercolor depicts a Manhattan street scene. Not only that, a Broadway street scene. And Broadway, and Broadway is the most significant street in, in America, especially in 19th century America. So to pick a street scene from Broadway in the mid 19th century, it captures a time and place which really couldn't be more significant when you think about American history. Um, so it has the Grand Lodge of the Sons of Temperance, but behind it is this dome. This is from the New York City Hospital, which was a neighboring building to the Grand Lodge of the Sons of Temperance. Um, they had this elaborate dome. The city, the New York City Hospital was the landmark, one, one of the major landmarks in Manhattan in the mid-19th century. So it depicts that. It depicts Broadway in the front. This cobble, these cobblestone walkways is kind of an exaggeration of what Broadway looked like in the mid-19th century. It goes down the street, there's a neighboring building. Next to that is an alarm bell tower. And then next to that is, be careful, it's a woman ringing the alarm bell tower, and this very detailed incised woman, she's standing on a, pod uh, on a raised podium, carved below her is love, purity, and fidelity, which is the motto of the Sons of Temperance. Beneath her, said, look not upon the wine, which was a motto of the Sons of Temperance. And also, obviously, this, this cooler was made to just hold water at the Sons of Temperance Lodge. Let me... Just going to go a little slowly. On the other side... It shows a flag, which was a ban the banner of the Sons of Temperance, the Star of Temperance, with a star, hand and size flag, impressed Star of Temperance on two lines, then the officers of the Sons of Temperance, listed by initials, says Sons of Temperance officers. More of this Broadway scene. And then at the top, it says love, purity, and fidelity, which is another motto. So, W.H. Farrar, like he was a, a very accomplished stoneware potter. He was probably a member of the Salina division of the Sons of Temperance. At the very least, he was commissioned by them to make this cooler for their opening in 1846, when the Grand National Jubilee of the Sons of Temperance took place in Manhattan. That's very, it's extremely well documented what took place that day. It was a major celebration of temperance. One of the, um, one of the things that took place that day was all of the bells in Manhattan and surrounding towns were uh, encouraged to be rung. So church bells, also alarm bells, like this alarm bell tower. So W.H. Farrar was probably most likely at the Grand National Jubilee in Manhattan in 1846. And so he went back to Gettys, New York to make this piece for the Salina Division of the Sons of Temperance, which was also right there in what is now present-day Syracuse. And he was recalling the events of that day. And so I love it when a piece of American stoneware uh, really exhibits the limits of the skill of a potter. So most of the pieces that we sell are standard production items, and they exhibit a certain level of skill. They're beautiful, high-quality examples. But occasionally you get a piece of stoneware that was made for an extremely a significant purpose. Oftentimes it's for a family member or for personal use or for something with just a, an extreme tie to the potter, like this water cooler, which really just shows, showcases their ability. W.H. Farrar was trying to make the highest quality example of American stoneware that he could, and he achieved uh, in an extreme way, extreme fashion, 
with this water cooler. So he made, uh, first of all, an extremely eye-catching example, just in size, size and shape alone. This is a seven gallon stormwater water cooler on pedestal base, extremely well potted on this pedestal base. Oftentimes these pedestal bases do not uh, survive uh, the firing still adhered to the main body. So that was a feat in and of itself. These beautiful rope handles, this kind of classical shape, uh, you know, reminiscent of you know, classical period. Um, but then what he employed to uh, just execute this extremely well-conceived uh, street scene was uh, he used incising, impressed design, and even applied design to uh, execute his conceived scene. So first of all, he used uh, incised designs, meticulously incising these architectural elements like these bricks, like these shingles, window panes, bricks on the chimney, cobblestones on Broadway, the arch of the bridge, the railing of the staircase, the woman herself, shading on the hospital dome. Then he meticulously impressed repeated designs so that as a whole, they make one continuous image. So he impressed all these swag and star and block designs to make this dental molding on the Grand Lodge. He impressed these star designs to ring the arched window, the dormer window, on the neighboring building. He impressed these large asterisk design to ring the bridge. He impressed, he highlighted the spigot hole with impressed waffle pattern designs cross patterns here, diamond patterns here. Then he individually press molded and applied this floral designs, which I've never seen on an example of Ferrar's work. Top rim, mid rim, each step of the pedestal base. It's extremely well thrown, well decorated, well fired. It was made by Ferrar to command attention and to really just <laughs> overwhelm the viewer that an example of stoneware could be this visually and artistically appealing. Really it rivals some of the best examples of American stoneware. Like I said, it was, um, it's just shocking to think that this piece still exists in private hands and not in one of the major museum collections. Uh, it is the finest example of American stoneware to sell in my lifetime. The last uh, piece of this quality to sell was the, at auction, was the famed Crolius Punch Bowl, which sold at Sotheby's in the late 1970s, uh, and is now in the collection of the American Folk Art Museum. This piece uh, is completely fresh to the market, and we are thrilled to offer it in our spring 2020 Stoneware Redware Auction.